What's up everybody, Jack here, um, coming at you with probably the most anticipated and um, exciting video of the year. It's my favorite video to do, uh, usually gets the most views, um, and I just, I can't wait to do it. Um, so today we'll be doing the MLB season preview and uh, predictions, which I always love and enjoy doing. Um, it's just so much fun every year to predict uh, the teams. Last year I won six for six on my uh, division winner, uh, division winners, um, and I'm hoping to do that again this year um, and just give my overall opinions about every team this year um, and uh, you know what it's how it's going to shake out. Um, so, um, anyways, you know I just want to. Um, say thanks for all the support thanks for watching this um we're gonna have a guest on i think later this week just to talk about some other opening day stuff um but again really excited for this and let's get right into it so first off um we got the al east um and first place i got the tampa bay rays second place yankees uh, third place toronto blue jays fourth place boston red sox my team and uh fifth place um the Baltimore Orioles. Um, so probably the biggest surprise to start off, you know, um, probably the boldest prediction I had, I think, um, it's, you know, which is the Rays um, finishing first. I had them finishing first last year, which was also bold, and they came through. Um, the main reason why I have Tampa is because, one, they have a great bullpen. Um, two, they have pretty much guaranteed offense every game. Um, you know, they're, Tampa's, Tampa's team is so based off of matchups um and you know they're, they're always they always put themselves in the best position to win and what i mean by that is you know when they face a lefty they start guys who are right-handed uh like brasso um adamas um Sets, or is righty i'm not sure um manuel margot you know and then when they play against lefties they start lefties Choi. I think Satsuga actually is a lefty. Kiermaier, um, Michael Perez, Zanino's against um, lefties. So they always, with their offense, they don't have any stars, maybe at Arad's Arena, but they set their se set themselves up to win by matching themselves up with the right people. Um, then let's look at their bullpen. Their bullpen is great. Um, and what I love about their bullpen so much is the different RMA levels. You've got um, guys like Sheriff, um, Aaron Loop. I think Aaron Loop is actually gone. Um, but you've got guys like Sheriff who throw really weird. They don't throw as if there was like 91. Then you've got, um, you know, guys like, God, what's that guy's name? Shane McClanahan throws 99, lefty. Um, you know, then you got Diego Castillo who throws really hard. Then you got Sledgers who doesn't throw as hard. Um, Fairbanks. Um, John Curtis, just all these random guys who throw from different arm slots, have different pitches, different things to offer that really just keep hitters off balance. Um, obviously, the biggest surprise probably you guys are you're saying is why did you take the Rays to finish first um, when they lost Snell and Morton? And I totally agree. Um, it's it's a huge that that's a huge loss for them. Um, you know, I mean, losing Snell, losing Morton, that's really tough. They still have Tyler Glass now, who I think is the number one easily. Um, and really, to be honest, um, they still have a lot of great options left over. Um, you know, they got Glass now, obviously, who's your number one, frontline number one, who I totally agree is at number one. Um, they still have Yarborough, who was great last year. I think he was pretty good. or The year before, he was really good. I think he's great. Um, Yanni Chirinos is decent. Uh, you've got Louis Patino, who I think will fit in really nicely with that rotation, who they got from the Padres. Um, they got Trevor Richards, who's all right. Um, Rich Hill, Michael Walker, Archer can maybe bounce back in Tampa. The thing is, is all the free agents that Tampa gets, they always bounce back and play really well. You know, I've never seen someone, a free agent, come to Tampa Bay and, you know, it be a complete disaster in the recent coming years um, when they started to use analytics and um, rap soda. So... That's just my opinion. Um, I have the Rays finishing first, um, and I really, really like them. Um, and we'll get into that next by talking about the Yankees. So the Yankees are um, the consensus favorite for first um, pretty much everywhere. 
Um, you know, and why not? I mean, you know, you have um, you have Cole. Um, you know, then you got Stanton, Judge. Um, you've got T.J. Mayhew. Um, you've got you know a great bullpen um, with Chapman and Britton. Um, and then you know they got Corey Kluber, um, Herman, Jameson Tyone. So you know why not the Yankees? Um, the reason I don't have the Yankees um, finishing first is because of their consistency. Um, first off, you can bet that Judge and like I would hundred percent bet that Judge and Stanton will miss at, and at least a hundred combined games this year. Um, they're always injured. Um, they just have really delicate bodies, and those are probably the two main centerpieces of their team, um, and their offense for that matter. Um, and when those two guys are out, you got guys like Talkman, who are good. I mean, Talkman, Clint Frazier, they're good players, but they're not like first place team outfielders, you know, if that makes sense. Um, you know, last year was kind of rough for them. I mean, I know Glaber Torres was hurt for a while, um, and Sanchez didn't hit well at all. Um, but some guys really stepped up too. Um, so I just don't have the Yankees because they're not as consistent as the Rays, if that makes sense. Um, I think, like I said, Judge and Stanton will go on the DL and then their lineup is a lot worse when they lose those two guys. Um, Torres has got to have a better season, I think. Um, and I think he will bounce back. Um, you've got LeMahieu, who's an offensive machine. Um, and overall, I think their lineup is also just a little weaker in general this year. Um, you know, they have J – I don't know what's up with Brett Gardner. I guess he's not on their team anymore. So they're putting filling him in with Jay Bruce, who's really old. Um, we need to see if Sanchez can hit, but they're pretty much dead at the catching position right now because Higashioka can't hit for shit. Um, and Gary Sanchez was miserable last year offensively. I mean, he hits a few home runs, but that's really it, and he's not a good defender. Um, so, and I think Aaron Hicks is pretty overrated. I mean, he produces well, but I think he's kind of overrated. So their offense isn't that great. Um, and then starting pitching also took a hit. Uh, they lost Paxton, who wasn't good last year, but I think he's okay. Lost Paxton, um, Tanaka, which is huge. Tanaka's really consistent. I really wanted the Red Sox to get him. They didn't. Too bad. Um, so they lost Tanaka. Um, who else? I guess Severino starting the year on the DL, which is too bad. So rotation now is um, Garrett Cole, Kluber, Montgomery, Herman, Tyone, which is still really good. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's a really solid five. Um, but it's it's really – I don't really know who the number two is in that group. Um, I guess Kluber, he's got to bounce back though still. I mean, he was, he was not good last year. Um, he was injured most of the time. Um, and Tyone, I think, will pitch well for them, but, you know, he's still got to prove himself. Uh, and then their bullpen's really good, uh, which is why I have them in second place, I guess. Um, and then after that, it's a pretty big drop, somewhat of a drop-off to the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, so the Blue Jays are a lot better this year, obviously adding Springer, uh, Simeon, um, Kirby Yates. Uh, who else did they add? They retained Robbie Ray. Um, they got Steven Matz. I mean, no. Nah. Um, I feel like they got someone else for their bullpen that's pretty good, um, but I just can't ha don't have it off the top of my head. But still, I mean, this is a lot better of a Blue Jays team. I mean, Springer um, is one of my favorite players, um, great leadoff hitter, uh, you know, and he's really going to help their lineup. Um, and they get a really a true leadoff hitter. I didn't really think Kevin Biggio was a true leadoff hitter, to be honest. So now you have Springer. Then you have Marcus Simeon, who I re wanted the Red Sox to get so badly. Um, he's such a great player. Um, he's pretty good defensively, but he's me playing second base, so he won't even have like as much pressure since Bichette's going to be at short. Um, and he's really good at getting on base and just, he's just an offensive machine. I mean, he produces so well at the plate. Um, and then, you know, you surround those guys with your core that you already have, which is Bichette, Teoscar Hernandez, who had a monster year. Guerrero Jr. I think is going to break out this year. Um, I know he's been really working hard in the offseason. Um, Biggio, Lourdes Gurriel, Rowdy Tellez, um, and then, you know, like Danny Jansen, that catcher. But still, that's a really solid core that they already had. And they, they made the playoffs with last year, um, you know, which they're surrounding Springer and Simeon with. So, 
you know, I mean, their team's looking great offensively. Awesome lineup. Um, starting pitching is a little bit of a question for them. Um, Ryu's obviously a frontline number one starter. Then after that, it's a big drop off. Um, you got Roark, who's solid. He's not a number two starter, though. You got Ray, who needs to kind of prove his consistency. Um, same thing goes for Steven Matz and Ross Stripling. Um, and even Nate Pearson, I mean, you know, he's great, but he's got a he's got to show that, you know, he's a great prospect, but he's got to show that he's got to have that translate into major leagues. Um, and I've seen his stuff, but the bottom line is they really don't have a number two starter. Um, and you need, for me, you know, to be confident, and I know this sounds so contradictive since I took the Rays, um, but I, th I still think the Rays have a solid group of three with, you know, Glass now, um, Archer, Patino, Rich Hill, Waka. I, I think those guys are going to do well, and that's just my opinion, Yarborough. Um, but the Blue Jays really don't have um, a solid number two or three for that matter, um, which is why I have them a little lower. The bullpen is pretty good, um, but, you know, that's why I got them at three, and that's why I have them above the Red Sox. I think a lot of people are debating, oh, the Red Sox will be better. Um, but uh, I don't agree with that. Um, so let's let's take a look at um, my squad of the Boston Red Sox. Um, so really, first off, I want to say as a Red Sox fan, really disappointing offseason. Um, we didn't get any guys that I wanted. Um, we had a lot of money to spend, and we didn't take advantage of it whatsoever. Um, we could have gotten guys like Marcus Simeon, um, Marcelo Zuna, Springer. Bauer, I think, would have been an overpay, so not really and too interested in him. Um, but still, you know, could have taken a step forward towards um, being good again. Um, and we did spend money, which I, and, but we didn't spend it the right way, I don't think. Um, first off was Kike Hernandez. Um, you know, I mean, you could have gotten Marcus Simeon for a little bit more money than him. And Marcus Simeon's like 20 times better of a player. Uh, but instead they decided to get Kike Hernandez, a platoon player for the Dodgers. Um, so that's really disappointing. He's going to be our everyday second baseman. Um, we also trade for Jeter Downs, and he's not even ready yet to be in the MLB. Uh, we traded Mookie Betts for him. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, then we could have, we still, I don't even know who's going to be our third outfielder. I mean, let me look this up. Really. We have, we trade away Ben Attendee, which is like, okay, whatever. Um, you know, it wasn't producing at all. Um, but I think our third outfielder is going to be like Frenchy Cordova or something because we lost JBJ. Um, yeah, right now it's Franchi Cordero is our third outfielder. Like, are are we trying to win here? Like, what's the what's the goal? What's the goal? I I don't makes no sense. Um, so our lineup right now is you know we have Hernandez. We still have the core of like Bogarts, Devers, Martinez. Um, Vasquez, who I think is awesome. I love Christian Vasquez. Thank the Lord we didn't trade him. Um, and then I like Hunter Renfro, but he really can only play against lefties. But he, he was a great signing. I really liked that. I liked Marwin Gonzalez a lot. Again, he can really only hit against righties, I believe. Um, but the thing is, the bottom line is we need another outfielder, and we didn't get that. And we're going with this guy, Franchi Cordero, who has been cut by like four teams. I know he's been cut by the Padres, I believe the Angels, maybe some other team. Been cut a ton of times. We traded Andrew Benatendi for him. Um, and, you know, he's got great exit velocity, but he, he really can't, hasn't shown that he can hit. Um, hopefully Chavis and Dalbeck can, Chavis really needs to have a good year this year and just prove that he's a good prospect, like he's been talked about. I can see it. He's got a great swing, great power. Um, and then Dalbeck's been raking in the spring league as well as Chavis. So hopefully those guys can tear it up. But overall, this is a pretty weak lineup, um, which is usually our strong suit. Um, and the, the, the overarching theme is you could have gotten Springer or Ozuna for not a ton of money. I mean, Springer was a lot, but Ozuna was four years for $64 million. You could have plopped him in left field where, you know, you're really not affected that much by defense and really transform this lineup, um, but instead they decided not to spend money, and now we have Franchi Cordero as our um, third outfielder, which is pretty disappointing. Um, then, of course, you have the starting rotation, and the really the only way they could have improved it, in my eyes, being fair towards them, is by trading for some, uh, by trading for people, because um, I think Bauer would have been an overpay. Um, you know, you could have gotten, like, Paxson or Kluber, but, like, I'm not that mad we didn't get him. Um, but I would have liked to see, like, 
if we're trying to win a trade for like Joe Musgrove, um, we probably wouldn't have gotten Blake Snell to be honest, just because they don't want to trade in division. Um, but like Musgrove, um, who else could we have traded for? Maybe Darvish, I guess, if we want the contract. I don't know about that. Um, but there were really weren't that many ways to improve the rotation, so I'm not going to be that mad about it. Um, and it's still like, it's okay. Um, you know, when we have Rodriguez and Sale back, it'll be pretty good. I mean, we'll have, when we got Rodriguez and Sale back, we'll have Rodriguez, Sale, Evaldi, um, Richards, Martin Perez, and Tanner Houck, and Nick Pavetta, which is a lot of options. Um, but, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty rough season right now where the rotation's at because Rodriguez is hurt, um, Sale's still recovering from Tommy John. So it's going to be like Avaldi, Tanner Houck, who was great last year. I really like Tanner Houck. Um, he showed a lot of promise last year. Um, then like Martin Perez, Richards, Pavetta, which is not good at all. It's why, you know, I picked them to finish fourth. And then the bullpen's still pretty mediocre. Um, they did get um, Ottavino, which was great. Um, you know, I really like that. Um, and I'm really happy we got him. But we still got, like, Matt Barnes. You know, it's still, like, the Matt Barnes, um, that guy. Oh, God, who's that guy? Some, you know, a bunch of random schmoes who aren't that great. Um, there's some guy I'm trying to think of who's in our bullpen. And he's like, okay. Um, but bullpen overarching ideas, it's, n it's not very good. Um, so that's why I have him in fourth place. Really, honestly, like, having an honest conversation about the Red Sox, has really opened up to me that they're really not as good as I actually thought they were going into the season. We, we really aren't going to be good this year. Um, I mean, we'll be better than last year, but we still suck. Um, and there's still a long way to go. Uh, and I think that's all I'm going to say. Um, and it's really frustrating. Uh, so, and then, of course, we have in fifth place, we have the Orioles. Um, Orioles made some weird moves, I guess, maybe to say that. I don't know. Um, they didn't re-sign Alberto or oh, one more guy who's on the Tigers, and I don't know who it is. Um, it's not Santander. Um, I can't remember, but it was, I think it was Rio Ruiz, who they didn't re-sign either, who I was like kind of, I don't know, flustered by. But the bottom line is, and I said the same thing for this last year about the Orioles. The, the, um, I can't remember what their GM's name is now, which is annoying, but... The Orioles know what they're doing, um, and they're going to make the right moves, um, and they're going to rebuild the right way. Um, you know, they, they know what they're doing, um, so I wouldn't be wor worried if I'm an Orioles fan. They also looked, like, pretty good last season for a 60-game season, um, and the amount of desolate talent that they had. Um, they did bring in Michael Franco, who's a good addition, good young player, um, and Freddie Galvis, just to kind of make the team, I guess, a little presentable and make it not horrible. Um, and then their rotation. Uh, so their lineup, I mean, they're getting Trey Mancini back. We'll see if Cedric, Cedric Mullins can break out. They got Santander, who I think is pretty good. Um, Mount Castle showed a lot of promise. Um, I like Austin Hayes. He's a big grinder. Um, you know, grinds all at all of his bats. Tough player. Um, Cisco, I think, had a decent year maybe or maybe it was Pedro Severino I think I had an oak like a surprisingly good year and I don't even know if they brought him back but I know Cis they have Cisco um then they got Franco Galvis some guy named Ramon Orias is projected to start at second base um we'll see Richie Martin a bit too who I like uh got him out of the rule five draft um and then it'll be interesting to see when we see like Rutschman um I don't know when we're going to see Yunziel Diaz, if that's how you say his name, for who they got from the Dodgers for Manny Machado. Um, and Hunter Harvey, you know, those DL Hall, the top prospects. Um, then their rotation is is really, really struggling. I mean, they got Means, Harvey. I don't know why they cut King Felix, um, but I did like the trades they make. Like, you know, it, it's great to, that they're, like, liquidating their assets. They got rid of Cobb. Um, who might be good for the Angels, but they got rid of him and they got prospects for him. Um, and they know they're going to finish in fifth place. So what they're really doing is just being like, all right, we'll get rid of all of our guys. And, um, you know, I guess they're keeping Mancini because he's kind of a fan favorite. But for the most part, um, they're just, uh, you know, they're liquidating their assets and kind of just th they know they're going to finish in fifth place. So why not just be horrible? And that's smart. I mean, 
you know, I wish the Red Sox kind of did that at this point. Um, and they're going to get good prospects and high picks, and in a few years they'll be really good. Um, so that's it for the AL East, and uh, I'll be back soon with uh, AL West, I believe. Thank you.